really, really great. And uh, we're not just entering into a new year, but into a new decade. And uh, I believe that God watches the calendar. I do. I believe that He not only watches the calendar, I believe He ordains the calendar. I believe that He controls the calendar. I believe He uses the calendar for His purposes. And, uh, and so uh, I, I don't get into a lot of numerology and all this kind of thing where, you know, what does this number mean and what does that number mean? I don't have anything special that 2020 means for you. I don't think your eyesight's going to clear up, you know, and you're going to see perfectly uh, or anything like that. But uh, I do believe that God uh, not only pays attention to the ends of years and the beginning of years, but also that, uh, that he controls what happens when and he uh, he uses that calendar to, to make himself known in our lives. And, and so I believe that uh, 2019 on its way out, 2020 on its way in, is a special time to the Lord. This is a, a time of transition for us, we, a time that we reflect, a time we look back, and a time that we look forward. Uh, a lot of times we get caught up in just the, the here and the now and the today. Like, Oh, I can't believe this is happening to me, uh, me today. Or I hope that this happens sometime in the future. And yeah, you know, we we get we get caught up in the in the day to day. But uh, at this time of the year, when we when we see the calendar actually change, it just causes something psychological to happen to us, and we start to pay attention to things that maybe we didn't think about before. We reflect and we look forward, and uh, and I believe that God is in that. And so today, I want to. To bring you a message, it's a little different today, a, a little different style message, uh, kind of a, a looking back message and a visionary type message as well. Uh, simply called this, the future is this way. The future is this way. Uh, and so I want to start today with how we got here in the first place. Now this is, I said it earlier, uh, but we are four months in. We launched September the 15th of this year. And, and it's hard to believe, but it's already been four months. And it still feels fresh. It still feels new. Uh, we are excited each, each Sunday morning to get up and to, to be a part of what God is doing. And, uh, and so I, I spent some time just thinking back on how did we get here? How did we get to this point? And, and since we're not just looking over the year, but we're entering a new decade, I found myself looking way back over the last 10 years. And then trying to look forward into the next 10 years as well. You don't get to do that all the time. You don't enter into a decade all the time, right? It's just every 10 years. That's, that's, how, that's how it is. So you, don't get to, you only get to go through a few decades in your life. Uh, maybe 10 if you're really, really blessed, right? Uh, and so it's, it's hard to get uh, more than just a couple of handfuls of decades under your belt uh, in, in this life. And so it's a special time. This is a, this, it is a special time. So I was reflecting back. Ten years, you know, ten years ago, I didn't have any gray hair. I was I was looking at pictures of myself, and I thought, "Wow, look look at that!" I, my hair was just completely one color, and and there was no gray in there at all. But I earned every one of these, and I'm proud of them. Oh, whenever I was younger, um, some of my favorite pastors and preachers, they all had like gray in their temples, you know, and so I wanted to be just like that. I thought I, I want to have some salt and pepper in my hair. Now I've got it. I don't want to get rid of it. I, I, I do. I, I feel like I earned that. Uh, but 10 years ago, I didn't have any of that. Uh, 10 years ago, I had actually more hair on my head than I do now. Uh, so now I have to kind of be careful which way I comb my hair, or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, 10 years ago, I didn't have any children. I was not a father yet. I wanted to be, but I, but I wasn't. Uh, my wife and I had only been married for about three years. We had uh, just purchased our first house. And we had just moved to Frisco. We hadn't been in Frisco very long, just about a year. And uh, we moved here not because it was booming and, uh, and, just ex and crazy growth and all that. That was really just starting, really just kind of getting started. And uh, we just came here because there were good schools and we liked the feel of the, of the place and all that. And we thought we could raise a family here, and so that's why we came and, uh, and, and grew to not just see those things from a distance, but to experience them and to, and to love Frisco and, uh, and, to, and eventually to feel a need for this kind of church in Frisco. But uh, I, was, I was thinking back about being involved in the church that we were at and uh, serving and teaching Bible studies and leading small groups and, and those kinds of things. And by the time that uh, 2012 had come, I had found myself as the teaching pastor uh, at 
another church in a nearby city. And in September of 2012, uh, I felt from the Lord very strongly that we were about to leave the church where we were currently attending and serving. And that was, was kind of disconcerting to me because um, I didn't really feel like there was a clear direction. I feel like the only clear direction was leave. <laughs> and, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm real careful. If I feel like I've heard from the Lord, I don't, I'm not one that um, I, I sense something and I just run out and just start blabbing it to everybody and I put it on Facebook and I start telling, calling everybody on the phone, hey, I just heard from the Lord, you won't believe what he... I, I test it. I test it. I, 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 always, I, was, I was brought up to be very careful. When, when, you, when you say things like, thus says the Lord, or the Lord says, I, I want to be so, so very careful with that. You know, in the Old Testament, if you said something and it didn't come to pass, they just stoned you, <laughs> right? And so I, I'm like, I, I don't, I don't want to be stoned, right? And, and I, sure, I sure don't want to take the name of the Lord in vain. I, I surely don't want to allow my imagination or my, my thoughts or my desires to get in the way. So if I feel like I hear from the Lord, uh, I try to, to test that. And to confirm that and, and, and wait on that. And, and God has never failed that when he, is, when he has truly spoken to confirm himself again and again and again. And so in 2012, I felt this. I, and, and I went to, to Tamara and I said, I, I feel like we're supposed to leave. I'm not sure. We, we, need, to, we need to pray about this because this, this, is, this would be a big thing. And uh, there was not a clear direction as to where we should go. I, I really felt like there was something new that God was wanting us to do. Uh, but I wasn't sure what that was. I hadn't heard that clearly uh, or that many directions. It was basically just, I want you to go. And, uh, and so I, I remember uh, uh, one Saturday telling, telling Tamara, I said, I, I really feel like that we're supposed to go. Uh, I don't know where, but I would really like to, I would like to know where we're going to go. I'd like to know what we're going to do when we get there. And uh, if it's something new that God's wanting to start, I'd like to know how we're going to pay for it because, you know, money is always an issue when you're starting something new. And, and so I literally said those things. And would you know that that Sunday, the very next day, the pastor who had no idea what we were dealing with, uh, walked into the pulpit and began to preach about just going where God tells you to go. And you don't have to know where you're going, and you don't have to know what you're going to do when you get there, and you don't have to worry about money because he's going to take care of things. And, and I remember looking at him and thinking, oh, no, I did hear from God. <laughs> I did, and I'm going to have to do something I don't want to do, and that's go somewhere without a plan. And I, I, cause I wanted to be able to tell people, you know, you, if you're surrounded by people that you love and people that care about you and you're, you're being used, and, all, and when, when, you, when you say, I'm leaving, they go, well, why? You want to be able to tell them why. And you don't want to just say, God told me to, because everybody says that. Everybody plays the God card. Everybody, everybody plays the God card, and, and nobody likes it when the God card's played on because you can't argue with the God card. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted to say, well, God has called us to do this, and he's going to have us go there, and this is how he's going to fund it, and there it is. And that's what we're going to do, and everybody could clap and send us off, and everybody be happy for us. That's what I wanted, but that's not what God had intended. And, uh, and so he confirmed, I mean, he quoted me. And I, I went back home. I remember getting in the car with Tamara, and we we're driving home. I said, did you hear what the pastor said? I mean, he said this, and she says, I heard that. And so I went back home, and I waited a couple of days for them to get the sermon online. And, and then I went back and listened to it again, just to make sure that he had actually quoted me and said exactly what I thought that he said. And uh, I told you, that's what I, I like to confirm things. So I, I went back, and, and sure enough, he did. And I, I thought, my goodness, I, I don't really want to do this. And so um, I, I, I really want to be sure. And, and, and so I, I went to my pastor, and I, and I told him, you know, what was going on. That was probably a little premature because I, needed to, I should have prayed and, and fasted and all this kind of thing. But I was, I was just like, if this is what God wants me to do, then bless God, I'm going to do it. Goodbye. You know, that was the wrong, it was the wrong thing to do uh, that, that particular way. But, um, and so he, he's like, well, let, let's slow down a little bit. Let's, you know, and so we, uh, we began to formulate, a, you know, let's, let's talk some more and this kind of thing. I said, I'm, I'm going to begin praying and fasting. And uh, it was, I, I decided to, to pray and to fast for three weeks, 21 days. Uh, and so I, I knew that I probably couldn't go without food for 21 days Okay, I'm not that, that sturdy of an individual. And so I said, well, I will, I will do like three days and then I'll eat. 
I'll have, I'll have one day where I don't, and then I'll go three more days, and I'll just do that for three weeks. And, and so I did, and, and praying and focused on this of, God, if, you really, if you're going to ask me to, to take this step of faith, I really need to hear from you. I really need to know that, uh, that I have heard from you. And it wasn't just this coincidental thing that the pastor said, because sometimes that happens. And, uh, and I, I don't want to just... I don't just want to do that. And so I started this, this period of prayer and fasting. And um, it was during this period um, that my aunt, who didn't know anything about what was happening, I hadn't talked to her in a couple of years even, um, felt led by God to send me a devotional book that had belonged to my grandmother. And I went this entire three weeks praying, fasting, seeking the will of God, uh, I want to hear your voice, God, and, and nothing. Not a thing. Not a peep from God. There was no message that was preached that gave me any comfort. There was uh, nobody called me and said, I have a word from God for you. I, I was studying the scriptures and nothing was jumping off the pages. And, and, and I, I didn't hear the voice of God when I was praying. I was just three, three weeks of this and fasting and, and nothing. And uh, the day after my fasting ended... It was, just, it was the next, I, I fasted, I ate, I thought, well, I tried. I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to have to just wait for God to, to speak again. And, and that next day, I went to my mailbox, and I opened up the mailbox, and when I did, I saw inside the mailbox a couple of envelopes and then this brown paper package, small, it's this package. And immediately when I saw it, I don't know if you've ever had this, happened to you, but I felt uh, something in my spirit. I felt, I just, I felt the, the Holy Spirit moving on me, and I thought, this is an answer to your prayers. And I, I was just, I was overcome by the Spirit as I reached in, and I took this package out of the mailbox, and I thought, what is this? And I looked at it, and I saw it was from my aunt, and I said, well, this is interesting. She doesn't normally send me things, and so I go inside, and I open it up, and it was this book. I don't know if you can see how raggedy the book is. It was very well read for uh, over a period of uh, 20-something years every day. It's not a Bible. It's a devotional, a daily devotional. It belonged to my grandmother, who was uh, a woman that, that feared God and read her Bible, prayed every day, took copious notes. I have, I have many of them at my house of all the messages that she uh, sat in. If she was sitting here today, she'd be taking notes almost verbatim what I'm saying, every passage of scripture, anything that she, anything that she heard. And inside this book was a note. And here it is. And, well, I'll just read part of it to you. How about that? That's, that's better. She says, Ben, this was dated 925-12, by the way. Ben, bless you. Two weeks ago, I felt strongly impressed to send this treasure to you. Sorry, it has taken too long to get, uh, to get it ready to send. I'm thanking God for your walk with him and the knowledge and ministry that he has given you. Continue to use it for his glory. May this simple little book enrich your life as much as it has mine. May the same God that mother served reveal himself through these words which were held in your mama's hands. Cherish it as much as I have, and thank you for your understanding and patience. And then she wrapped it up on the other side. And I read that. I went back to my calendar. I said, I just got this. It took, it took a few days to get to me. She, she sent it on this date. She said two weeks ago she had heard from God. That was right when I was trying to figure out what I'm going to do. It's like literally. I know what I'll do. I will pray and I will fast for an answer. At the same time that I was deciding to pray and to fast for an answer, God was already preparing it. And she had decided to send it to me then, but then waited. And then God said, send it now. And so it arrived right on time. And so I opened this book up, and I turned to the very first page. And this is what I read. It comes out of Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 11. 
It says this, The land you are crossing the Jordan to occupy is one of hills and valleys, a land that drinks in water from the rains, a land that the Lord your God looks after. He is constantly attentive to it from the beginning to the end of the year. So I read that and I said, okay, all right. And then I looked at the devotional part and it says this, Today, dear friends, we stand upon the verge of the unknown. And I thought, yes, I, I'm standing on the verge of the unknown. Preach to me, brother. There lies before us the new year and we're going forth to possess it. Who can tell what we shall find? What new experiences? What changes shall come? What new needs shall arise? But here is the cheering, comforting, gladdening message from our Heavenly Father. The Lord your God cares for it. His eyes are upon it all the way from the beginning to the ending of our year. All our supplies to come from the Lord. Here are the springs that shall never dry. There are fountains and streams that shall never be cut off. Here, anxious one, is the gracious pledge of the Heavenly Father. If he be the source of all our mercies, they can never fail us. No heat, no drought can parch that river, the streams whereof make glad the city of God. The land is a land of hills and valleys. It's not all smooth or downhill. It goes on to talk about the hills and the valleys. I won't read it all. But I said, you know, here I am. I'm standing on the verge of the unknown. And here's a message from God that he's in it. You're going into a place that you don't know. You're walking into the unknown, but God is in it. It's going to be hills and valleys. It's going to be ups and downs, but God's caring for it, and God's eyes are upon it. God's hand is in it. And so we, we went through a transition process. We were submissive to the pastoral leadership, and we were able to leave the right way. And that led us over the next several years where this passage never came up again. It's hills and valleys. I, never, I, I don't know if you've ever heard it, right? You may have. I, I, I read it there, uh, and then I never again heard it preached, never again heard it brought up. I don't remember ever reading it again. Nothing. And when we set out to plant this church, we've been released from where we were and given blessing to, to do this. And so we stepped out and faith, and we began to make preparations uh, to, to plant. There's a lot of preparations that goes into planting a church. I don't know if you've ever done it before, but uh, there's a lot that goes into that. And, and so we, we began to seek a lot of counsel. That's the first thing that we did is like, who can I talk to that's done this before, <laughs> right? Who has done it well? Who did it not go so well? I want to know, know all the ins and outs. I want to know the ups and the downs on everything. And so we sat down with with a man who was a much respected man of God in our lives. And we began to talk. And after we had laid out our hearts, after we had laid out our, what God was, was dealing with us about, we just talked about all, all these things. He, he began to speak, and he said this. He goes, all I can really say is this. The path you've chosen is this. It's a land of hills and valleys. But the Lord is in it. And... My eyes filled up with tears, and I said, you don't know what you just said. I haven't heard that passage for, for years now, right? Uh, but here, here it is, and, and, and this was just one of many moments where God uh, began to collectively confirm the direction we're supposed to go. I, again, it, collectively is a key word there because it's not, this is not an endeavor that I would have undertaken. It just, I just felt this from God, so I decided to do it. Now, it's something that God confirmed again and again and again and again. This is just one of those ways. I, I really wanted to launch this church in January of 2020. If I had had my way, we wouldn't be sitting here right now. We, well, we might be sitting here right now. It'd be, hey, guys, in just a couple of weeks, we're going to launch. Isn't this exciting? We'd be building the team, and, you know, that's how I had planned it. I, I wanted a long run-up. I wanted a long ramp because that's me. I, I, wanted to, I wanted to have lots of time to repair, lots of time to raise money, lots of time to build the team, lots of, lots of time. And um, Tamar didn't feel that way. And uh, uh, other, other church planting experts didn't feel that way. They felt like that would be too long and you need, to, you, know, you need momentum, you need this, and all the time has to be right and everything. And so uh, really the best time is, is in September. 
And I was like, well, January 2020 is so marketable. I mean, you think about it like it's January 2020. I mean, that's, that's like a nice round number. You'll, it, it's a lot easier to calculate how old your church is after you've been going. And you have to have an even number to start from, right? To do in math, I like to start from zero. And so it's like 2020 is a lot, a lot it's easier. It's just, and it's marketable. And I mean, 2020 vision and, you know, it's, it's a new decade. And start your decade off right with, a, you know, something new with a new church. And you know, there's all kinds of things that you can do marketing-wise. It's going to be so much better to do it. And still, no, I I just couldn't get peace about that, and we couldn't come to a collective agreement about that. And that's important, too, uh, that you have collective agreement uh, in your marriage, and especially if you're planting a church or anything, really. But uh, especially if you're doing something big, you need to both agree. And so I begrudgingly and uh, through the Spirit of God and the counsel of others came to, okay, well, let's launch in September of 2019. And then it was, okay, well, what day do we launch in September of 2000? Let's pick a day. Let's, we got to have the right day. Well, uh, we don't want to do it on the, the very beginning of September because there's Labor Day and, and all this. So we, we're going back and forth after Labor Day, uh, before the Cowboys play. You know, you're trying to you're trying to, you're trying to, I'm, we, well, I don't compete with other churches, but we do compete with the Cowboys. And, and, and so you, you do try, you're, you're trying to work things around. It's like, you want it to be success. You're trying to think of all the things that's going to make this a success. And, and so we, we landed on September the 15th, 2019. And the week before we launched, all the work was done. Right, we I mean, we worked hard. We got and those of you here that uh, that was on that were on the launch team, you you know we we worked hard. Uh, we we got it right down to the wire. We got it ready to go. We did our last rehearsal service, and then that final week before launch, it was just pretty surreal. As I just reflected back, I'm thinking, here we go, launch Sunday's happening. Whether I have no idea how this is going to go. I don't know if there's going to be like our launch team shows up and five people or if there's going to be 500 people. I have, I have no clue, right? Uh, and so we, we've done all the marketing. We, everything's in place. We've done everything that we could do. We spread the word. Uh, we've prayed. We've fasted. We've done all these things. Now what's going to happen? So I, I just spent that, that week just reflecting, just going back and, God, how in the world did we get here? This is so, this is so it's a surreal experience. It really is. And, um, and so as I was going over my notes and my thoughts from years past, I, I came across some thoughts that I wrote in September of 2012 uh, when I was entering into that season of prayer and fasting, the same time that my aunt was preparing to send me this book, the same time God was impressing me and impressing her and beginning to tie some things together. I, I, I saw that I had written some things down. This is, this is what I wrote. I was trying to figure things out, and I, I wrote this. My, my calling is teaching. I have a strong desire for people to know the Word. My gift is preaching and exhortation. So what can I do to inspire faith? What can I do to encourage, to, to prophesy? What, what would it would it would probably need to require like travel three to four times a year? It needs to allow me to still be at home to help raise my family. It needs to be funded somehow, but it doesn't easily allow for a traditional job. How do these pieces fit together? How do I take the next step? How can I empower others to empower churches? This is this is what I was thinking, right? And now looking back in hindsight, I'm thinking, plant a church, you dummy, right? <laughs> But then I wasn't, I, I, it wasn't like, it wasn't clicking, but I, this is, that's what I wrote. And the date on that note is September the 14th, 2012. Seven years later, on September the 15th, 2019, I don't know if you're, keep, that's like to the day, seven years to the day that God was speaking to me about my giftings and stepping into my calling and preparing to send me confirmation and all seven years, which is a, which is a very biblical and symbolic number of completion and fulfillment. Seven years to the day. We didn't plan it. I was looking at 2020, but that wouldn't have lined up with, 2000, with 2012, would it? That would have been a very different kind of timeline. God's in control of the timelines. He's controlling when I sense things, when I write things, when, when these ideas come. And it didn't feel like that at the time, but that's what was happening. And so seven years later, exactly to the day, we launch Revelation. Early this month, this month, Earlier this month, I'm, I was laying out on paper the plan for the first half of 2020. What will 2020 look like for us for the first several months? And I was thinking about 
launch. And so I went back to my notes again. I was, you know, I like to confirm things and make sure I, did I, did I tell everybody the right story? Yes, I did. Oh, that's, that's so exciting. It rebuilds my faith. I, I rebuild my faith all the time. I'm sorry. I just do it. And so I go back over things and I, it still blows my mind. Seven years to the day. Yes. And so I, I said, well, that was interesting. Let me look at some of my other notes from around that time. So I, I just went forward in my notes a, a little bit, and I saw that, uh, that on 11-24-2012, I had written down the beginning of an idea about a communion message. I never preached communion before. I'd ne- that was always something that the lead pastor did. And so I had an idea about a, a communion service. So I started writing it down just in case somebody ever asked me to preach a communion service. That was 11-24-2012. I realized at that moment that we had actually just had our first communion service, and it was 11-24-2019, seven years exactly to the day. And I thought, oh, that's an interesting quinky dink, right? And so I looked a little further. I was like, oh, this is fascinating. I'm just go, let's just let's go a little further in my notes here. And I so I looked again and I, I saw that on 1 27 2013 was the beginning of an idea for a sermon series about the nature and the attributes of God. Just the beginning of a of an idea that I had it had come to me on that particular day and I'd written it down just to go, go back and flesh it out later. And I went back and I, I saw, I said, 127.13. So I got on my computer and I looked at the notes that I just laid out for 2020. And would you know that we're going to start a, a series on prayer on January the 5th. I'll talk about that in a minute. But on January the 26th, 2020, seven years, exactly, we're going to start a series on the nature and the attributes of God. And I thought, okay, we're not dealing with a coincidence anymore. We're not. It's just, we're just not. God is at work. Not only is he at work, he's been at work before I ever even thought about him being at work. When the day, the day that I wrote, what am I supposed to do? Here's my calling. Here's my giftings. Here's, I'm not sure how these pieces fit together. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pray and I'm going to fast and I'm going to seek the will of God. God had already, just a couple of days before, spoken to someone else and said, send this to Ben. Well, hold on, just a couple of weeks and then send it. Okay, but uh, let's get this ready because something's about to. He was already at work before I even thought that he would ever be at work. It boggles my mind. It really does. It boggles my mind. But I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. I remember there was, there, was another, there was another time in the middle of kind of after we had left there and we were in transition uh, in, a, in another place. And, and, I, and I was, I'd kind of come back to this and say, God, is this where you want us to be? What is, what is what's going on? Uh, where, are you, where are you leading me? I remember uh, I was standing in my living room and, and as I was praying, I, I heard the voice of God so clearly say, look. So I looked. I always look when God tells you to look. I looked. What, where am I looking at? And then my eyes closed, and there was a book laying on my counter. It was a book that had been sitting on my shelf for, for years. Years. This goes back even before 10 years, uh, going back. Uh, it had been sitting there for, for years, and it had been given to us. It was written by and given to us by a, a family friend. And it was a book that I had not read. And I didn't read it on purpose because it was about sorrow and grieving and loss. And I didn't want to deal with that because I felt like if I read that book, I'm probably going to have to deal with some sorrow and some grieving and loss. And I don't want to, I don't want to get into that. So I'm just going to leave that book there until one day I might need it, right? And so I, but for some reason, about a week before, I had taken it and just set it on my counter. I don't know why. I had just decided to do that. And, and uh, in, in prayer, I was, I was praying, God, what do you? And, and, and he says, look. And I see it. And he says, I said, okay, here's a book. He says, open that book. Okay. Sure, God. I'll open the book. That's kind of weird, but okay. So I open it up. On the inside cover of a book about sorrow and grieving and loss is written an inscription of a passage of Scripture from Habakkuk chapter 2. And this is what it says. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3. It's kind of a strange inscription to write in the cover of a book about sorrow and grief and loss, but nevertheless, it's what this man of God had written years before. And it says this. For still the vision awaits its appointed time. 
it hastens to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. And I thought, well, that's pretty precise, God. That was, a, that was an answer that was prepared years in advance for the day that I would stand in my living room and question, God, did you really call me to walk into nothing? All the vision is waiting for its appointed time, Ben. There's a, there's a vision. There's a plan. It's just waiting for the appointed time. And it's, it's going to come. It's, it's, going, it's, it's running on its way to the end right now. The vision will not lie. If it seems slow, just wait for it. It will come. It will surely come. And I could share more and more stories. I'm not going to do that today, but I, I could. And I, I've been reflecting on those things over this last couple of weeks. So here we are. We're here today on this last Sunday of 2019, stepping into 2020. And we have among our church body, when I think about it, there's, there's people who have been, been hurt by church. There's people who are just spiritually uh, adrift before they found us. There are some that are spiritually mature. There are people with very traditional church backgrounds. There are those who have served on teams but now are leading teams. There's, there's new believers. Uh, we even have people that are not sure what they believe. They just enjoy our company and what they feel when they're with us. We've engaged in spiritual warfare. We've seen the miraculous happen. We've experienced the presence of God that's inspired change in us. I see the change in your lives. I see the change in the people that, that come and they, they walk in. And, and, and I see the, the difference over the last four months that's in their eyes and in their face and in the energy when they, when they come into the room now. And I know that God is at work in their life, that God is bringing hope, that God is bringing healing, that God is restoring and God is raising up. I, I see all these different kinds of people with all these different kinds of backgrounds, all these, kind, all these different things, and, and yet uh, they're... they're there's something, uh, there's energetic in the air, there's something fun in the air, there's something excitement in the air, there's anticipation uh, that surrounds us here. And, and, and we've, in the last four months, we've, we've been able to, to help a, another church launch a brand new campus in a, a nearby city. We've sent Christmas gifts and the gospel message to kids around the world through the Samaritan's Purse. Uh, we've sent financial support to uh, a missionary work in the country of Lithuania. We've helped to, we've helped to feed hungry children right here in Frisco. And I, and I see all that, and I'm like, we're just four months old, and yet God is at work. And, and when I see that, I just go, wow, we, you know what? We're just getting started. This is just the beginning. This is, this is, that's just been the last four months of 2019. What's going to happen when we step into 2020? This, this is, I, it's a good thing that we didn't launch in January of 2020, because now I've got a running start. Yeah, now, now we're off to the races. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we came out of the starting blocks in September, but we're going to hit January 2020 in this new decade running full steam. That's awesome. That's awesome. If we were launching in January, we'd be, uh, for the first, right up to Easter, we'd be just kind of going through and trying to get it going, and Easter would be like our big ramp, right? But that's not the case. January, we're running already. We're, we're here. And, we're, and God is at work, and so that's awesome to me. And so uh, stepping into 2020, uh, we're going to begin the new year with a season of prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. I know that's not the most exciting sounding thing, but let me tell you, uh, it's an exciting thing when you know what prayer and fasting unlocks in your life and in, in the church. Prayer and fasting are the, the source of life in a church body. And the vision of this church came through prayer and fasting. The, the command and the call to, to start this church came through prayer and fasting. The launch of this church came after we all prayed and fasted for 21 days. And so the vision of this church, the future of this church, is going to be based in prayer and fasting. It's just going to be. I'm just telling you now. Just go ahead and get ready that you're going to hear a lot about it over the next decade. And we're, we're going to pray and we're going to fast. We're going to be recognized as a place uh, that where the Word of God is, is taught and practiced and where prayer and fasting occur. And this is going to bring people to God and this is going to bring miracles into our midst. It's going to bring revival to our homes and to our families and to our cities and to our nation. And so, Revelation, 
you are being called today to pray and to fast corporately together to anticipate what God is going to do. Uh, there's something uh, powerful that happens when we all choose to be together in something, when we choose to corporately uh, seek after the will of God. And uh, I was immediately brought to the, uh, the book of Acts chapter 2, where 120 believers had been told by Jesus, go into Jerusalem and wait there until I send the promise of the Father. And you've heard about it, I've talked to you about it, but you're going to receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you're going to be witnesses for me in Jerusalem and, and Samaria and Judea and to all the rest of the earth. And so go and wait there in Jerusalem for that. And so they did. And there was about 120 that obeyed the, the voice of the Lord and went to Jerusalem and found themselves in a, an upper room. And when the day of Pentecost arrived, which is a Jewish feast day, 50 days after the Passover, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. It filled the entire house where they were sitting. Tongues of, like, that looked like fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They began to speak in other tongues, other languages, as the Spirit gave them the ability, gave them the utterance to do so. And this happened because they were obeying, they were being obedient to the command of Jesus, go and wait for this promise, uh, but they were also uh, together. At Acts chapter 2, verse 1 says, they, when, when that day arrived, they were all together. Now, that word together, in English, we look at that and go, okay, they were all together. But it kind of loses something there in this particular translation. The King James says they were all in one accord, and that's probably a better translation uh, in this particular passage because when you look at the, the Greek word for together that is used, there's actually a couple of different words. This particular word that is used here literally means they're in one accord. They're unanimous. They're of the same mind. They're of the same purpose. They, they weren't just together like you would be sitting together with somebody on the bus. Uh, you weren't just riding with people that had they were all going to different places and had different goals in mind. No, we were all together unanimously. We're all together in one mind and in one accord. We're of the same mind. We're here for the same purpose and, and we were praying together and waiting for this promise of the Father together and then it happened. And so I want to tell you today that January the 5th, we're going to give you a, give you a few days of celebrating the new year before we start a fast. I'm not, I'm not a, a cruel pastor, okay? Uh, so we're going to wait a little while, uh, but on January the 5th, we're going to, uh, to begin a, a Daniel's fast. And so uh, Daniel's fast is a modern day uh, term that was invented to describe a certain type of, of fast. It's not the typical fast that you see in the scripture where you, there's no food at all. It's only water. Um, and since we're going for 21 days, I want to be something that we could all do. And so uh, in, in the book of Daniel, he describes this fast that he went on by saying, I ate no delicacies, I had no meat or wine, uh, I didn't anoint myself at all for the full three weeks. And we're going to take baths. Please, please do that. Okay, so I'm giving you permission to anoint yourself and to use lotions and, you know, deodorants and all that kind of thing. But uh, we will abstain uh, from uh, delicacies, sweets, uh, no bread meat. We're only going to eat vegetables, fruits, nuts, unprocessed grains, and we're going to stay away from luxuries like caffeine uh, and that kind of thing. You go, why? Why would you do that? Because we need to hear from God. We want to go into 2020, we want to go into this decade submitted to God. We're going to take some steps to bring our flesh under control so that we can hear the voice of God, so we can experience the presence of God together. So we're going to pray, we're going to begin praying together, we're going to begin fasting together on January the 5th. And so this will also be the first weekend of this new three-part series I was telling you about, about prayer. You know, prayer is one of the most searched terms on Google when you're talking about religious things. People search prayer all the time. How to pray? Why pray? What does prayer do? What's the best way to pray? What's the best time to pray? What's the best position to pray in? All, there's all kinds of things about prayer. We're going to talk about prayer. Invite your friends. Invite people who are far from God. Invite people that, uh, that used to know God, but now they're kind of not sure what they think about. Invite them all we're going to be talking about a, something that's going to not just encourage you, inspire you, but it's going to change your life. It's going to, your prayer life's going to change in January. You may, you may be here today and you think, well, I don't really have much of a prayer life. That changes in January. You have to have a really good prayer life starting on January the 5th. Okay? You can go ahead and get a head start and start praying now. That's fine. I'm not telling you to wait. 
But I'm just telling you, on January the 5th, your prayer life is going to change. Uh, this church is going to, to change. There's a shifting of gears that's going to happen uh, in the first three weeks of, of January. And, and when that's over, uh, when that series is over, uh, we're going to have an opportunity for God to begin to, to move in our midst in a, in a powerful way. And uh, we're going to then begin a, a deep dive series uh, for 12 weeks. We haven't done one of those yet. We're going to do a deep dive series for 12 weeks into uh, the, the nature, the names, the attributes of God. It's going to lead us right up to Easter. The last part of that series will be on Easter Sunday. It's going to be about Jesus. So we're going to start in the Old Testament, walk our way through all the names and attributes of God and all this, and we're going to end with Jesus on Easter, and it's going to be fantastic. And I'm looking forward to that. Uh, it's going to be an amazing day. Also in the works for 2020, we have lots of awesome plans, but uh, we're, we're going to make some upgrades around here. We, uh, we're going to upgrade our, our stage, make it look uh, different, make it look uh, better. Uh, we're going to uh, invest in a camera system so that we're not just using this little Mevo, which has been great. Thank you, Mevo. Uh, we've been doing that for, for four months, and it's been great for what it is, but we're going to uh, upgrade our presence online so that when somebody watches one of our messages online, uh, it's going to feel more professional and more engaging and something that they would say, oh, I need to go and check that out. And, and so we're going we're gonna to do that. And we'll do some upgrades in some other areas as well. Uh, we're looking at making changes to OnTrack uh, as well in, in 2020 uh, just to make it more efficient and uh, be able to handle the growth that is coming. Uh, and then uh, we're going to put a greater emphasis on corporate prayer. And so uh, we're going to begin having a, uh, a time of prayer before each service with our team uh, that lasts uh, for probably 15 or 20 minutes. We're going we're gonna to incorporate, we're going to have prayer time together as a corporate body. Uh, and we're going to begin that uh, in January as well. And uh, that's going to become something that we're just, that's going to become part of the, it's going to be new at first, but it's going to become very normal and routine uh, in a good way. Uh, very quickly. And uh, God is, I believe God's going to move before church ever starts. Uh, I believe that we're going to experience the presence of God in a powerful way, and, uh, and that's going to have an impact on each of our services. Uh, we're going to begin laying the foundation for small groups. I know some of you have been asking about small groups. That is something that I would like to do. I do believe in the power of uh, building community through small groups and, and, so, and, and ministry through small groups. Uh, so that is something I'm not ready to launch in January, but I do want to start kind of laying the foundation for that in 2020 uh, through uh, some Bible studies and through some teaching uh, that, I'm going to, that I'm going to do, and, and um, it's going to be good. And then uh, I'm also working on uh, some new training called, uh, right now it's, it's called this, but I don't know, what, I don't know if that's what it's gonna, the name's going to stick, uh, but uh, Next Level Leadership is what I'm thinking of it right now. And it would basically be for those people that say, I love being on the team, I want to be a better leader, and, uh, and so I, I want to step up to the plate and say, train me, make me a better leader. And, uh, and so be able to, to, uh, to take those of you who, who feel that, uh, that call of leadership on you, uh, to, to give you a next a next step up, and those will those will this will be where we pull uh, small group leaders from, and and other leaders uh, from the church will come through uh, this next level uh, leadership training, and so a lot and, and there's more, but those are some of the the things that early on in 2020 that we're already looking at, and, and how we how we can begin to develop those, and and to uh, to have something for for you guys to uh, to feel like wow things are uh, kind of. They're accelerating and they're going, and, and there's a plan, and, I, and there is. And so I, I wanted you to know it. So 2020 is going to be awesome. We're, we're preparing to grow. We're preparing to flourish. We're preparing to thrive, preparing to, to build you. It's, it's, very, it's very important. I, this is not about just gathering people in a building. If, it, if all this was is gather people in a building, well, we could gather a lot of people uh, to just come and sit and hear some good music and, and pat each other on the back and have a nice little country club type service atmosphere. That'd be great. But we're not doing that. We're, uh, the, the goal here is to build you, to turn you into better disciples of Jesus Christ. You go, well, I'm, I'm okay right now. Well, you're going to get better, right? You say, well, I'm, I'm a pretty mature Christian. You're going to get more mature. I'm going to make you just flat out ripe for Jesus. It's going to be great. And, uh, and it's, it's going to be wonderful. Uh, and if you're, if you're brand new to the things of God, you're going to have some steps and, and some training and things that to take you uh, into, uh, into maturity as well. Very important. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to, to establishing uh, that in 2020. And, and then the question comes, well, since this is not just a, a 2020, it's not just a new year, but it's a new decade, what, what happens over the next decade? How, have you looked that far out? Well, I try. Uh, my eyesight's not that great. But uh, I can tell you this. I, this, this is what I know about 
planning way into the future. Uh, it's one thing uh, to build a structure uh, that is based on very detailed plans, and you know this is the start and this is the finish, and here's all the steps in the middle. It's, it's one thing to, to set out to build something, and you, you have all the plans and you have all the materials laid out in front of you, and you're ready to go. Okay? It's, it's one thing to do that, and that, that can be pretty cool to accomplish. Um, it's an, quite another thing to build a system, not a structure, but a system that is alive, that is growing, that is reproducing. That's a very different kind of thing. And so uh, I, I'm not leading us into the next decade with this detailed plan of one, two, three, A, B, C, everything lines up and then we're done and we dust our hands and move along. That's, that's not what we're out to do. Uh, we're working on establishing processes that are scalable so that as we grow, these processes grow with it. Uh, we're looking at uh, a system that can grow and thrive based on guiding principles. And uh, so to do that, we have to establish rhythms and, and cycles and patterns. And so that's really uh, what we're, we're doing that now. We're going to do more of that in 2020. And as we go into the, in the decade, we're, we're establishing these rhythms, these repeated things. Uh, Aristotle, I don't know if you ever heard of him, kind of a smart guy a long time ago. He said this, he says, we are what we repeatedly do. And so I can take that and say, well, that's pretty true, even if he didn't believe in Jesus or anything. He still, that was still a pretty smart thing to say. Uh, and so we are what we repeatedly do. And so excellence then is not an act, but a habit. It's not just something that you do one time, but it's a habit, something you do over and over and over and over again. And so we are uh, going to work hard at continuing to fulfill our mission. I don't know if you've been to our website lately and, or if you remember the mission, but let me go ahead and tell you, our mission is very simple, connecting people to God. Uh, that's it. Connecting people to God. Four words. Three, one of those is just a little tiny uh, connecting word, but connecting people to God. And the reason why is because I believe that if we get people into his presence, they feel like they've connected with God, then they can experience his power. And this begins a cycle. Uh, when when people get into the presence of God and they experience the power of God, they, they tell other people about it who then come into the presence of God who experiences power. And when they experience his power, they find other people to bring into the presence uh, to experience his power. And it just goes and it goes and it goes and it goes. It's a cycle and it grows as it goes. That rhymes. That makes it extra special. I heard somebody say one time, you know it's prophetic if it rhymes. Well, it's not true, but it's always fun when that happens. Everything that we do over the next decade, whether that's worship, whether that's what we do with the kids, whether it's events that we put on, whether how we spend our money, whatever it is, it's about that. People, presence, power. People, presence, power. People, presence, power, people, presence, power, people, presence, power, people, presence, power. Again, 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 again. Because you have a wheel that's turning, you have a wheel that's going somewhere. Can I just tell you that, and I've said this before, I'm just going to say it again because what you repeat, people remember, so I'm just going to say it again so you make sure that you know. This whole thing that we're doing, not about me. It's not about me. You know what? It's not about you either. It's about us introducing people to him. That's what it's about. And it always will be that. It always has to be that. If it ever becomes about me, we've got a problem. If it ever becomes about you, we've got a problem. If it ever becomes about us, we have a problem. As long as it's about us connecting people to him, we're going to be exactly what God has intended us to be. That's going to be an amazing thing. I would rather have a hundred thriving, growing, amazing churches planted because of the work that God does right here than to have a hundred video campuses where people just listen to me preach all the time. I, I would I'd rather have that. I'd rather reach a thousand different cities around the world with people that were sent from here than to have a thousand sitting in attendance in one service. I just would. And at the same time, 
I don't see any reason why we can't have all that and a lot more. I'm not putting the, this box on God. I'm not trying to put boundaries on God. I'm just going to do what he said to do and let him do what he wants to do. Because I believe that there's going to be a revival of souls. I believe there's going, that there is a revival that is, that is just beginning in this country. And it's not just people that, that show up at some event and they raise their hand and they recite a prayer and everybody pats them on the back and they write them down as a number. And then on Monday, they go right back to living the way that they were. But something that is deep, something that is supernatural, something that is uh, entirely scriptural, something that affects a person's soul, something that affects a person's marriage, something that affects their family, their workplace, the school system, the city, and ultimately their nation. And I want to tell you today, we have our, we have our kids sitting in here today. And we have kids from, uh, that are all different ages, right? Uh, they're in in 10 years, at the end, when we get to 2030, we're going to, uh, my son will be 18 years old. If they're eight years old now, they're going to be 18 then. If they're 15 years old now, they're going to be 25 then. And this revival that is coming will belong to their generation, but it begins with us. It begins with us pouring into them. This is how you encounter God. This is how you experience God. This is, this is how you worship God. This is how you serve God. This is what you need to understand about God. Training them and then empowering them so that they can go and spread the gospel to the ends of the earth. There will be people sent from this church to spread the gospel, to plant churches, on the other side of the world, on the other side of the country, down the street, there will be people that come from this church that do that. And there are kids sitting here today that will do that. It begins with us. It begins now. This is the basis of my everyday prayer for this church. Every single day that I pray for this church is the prayer changes somewhat, but there's always the same, there's always this one element there. And as long as I'm the pastor of this church, it will continue to be this. It's this, send the hungry, send the thirsty, send the needy, send the hurting, send those that want to know God, send those that need to know Him. Don't send me the ones that think they've got it all figured out. Send me the ones that know they don't. Send them. Send me to them. Send them to me. Send them to us. Send us to them. Bring them. Bring them. Bring them. Why? Because John chapter 7, verse 37 says this, On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. And whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. And this he was talking about the Holy Spirit that hadn't been poured out yet because he hadn't been yet glorified. But he was already declaring, if you're thirsty, if you're seeking, come to me. That has to be our call. That has to be our command. That has to be our drive. Find the people. Put them in His presence. Let them experience His power again and again and again. It's going to take prayer. It's going to take fasting. It's going to take a strong desire to see the maximum that God has. Worship team, you can come. It's going to take prayer. It's going to take fasting. It's going to take a strong desire to see the maximum of what God has prepared. And I can't see all the way into the future. I, I, I don't. I, I, I can't tell you that, that I have a very detailed plan for the next 10 years. I, I don't. But I have a rhythm. I have a pattern. I have a cycle. I have a direction. And I look in the scriptures and I see those same patterns. I see those same values. I see those same cycles uh, of, that were possessed by people who were pleasing to God. And I sense it by His Holy Spirit that Jesus is here and Jesus is ready and Jesus is the answer. And, and so we're going to get into the Word. We're going to hear what He has to say. We're going to get our flesh under control. We're going to increase our, our prayer. We're going to seek His will because the future is this way. The future is this way. You go, which, which way to... It's this way. Prayer. Fasting. Word. Seek the hungry. Seek the thirsty. Seek the hurting. Seek the needy. The future. It's this way. We're going to get there together. Let's stand.